Hi, my name is Anna Acunto from the University of Texas at Austin. And in this video, I'm going to review how to, and demonstrate how to add and subtract when regrouping is required. Many students in our program learn to set up and solve word problems, but they make careless errors. They forget to regroup or regroup incorrectly when it's time to add or subtract numbers. So to improve this, we've taught them how to regroup for addition and subtraction. These strategies are used in all three of the Pirate Math Equation Quest intervention programs. The small, the individual intervention with total difference and change problems, the small group intervention with total difference, change, and equal groups problems, and the Texas word problem intervention with small group, oh, I'm sorry, the Texas word problem small group intervention with total difference, change, and equal group schemas. So each lesson in the Pirate Math Equation Quest intervention has five components, math act, flashcards, equation quest, buccaneer problems, ship, shape, sorting, and the Jolly Roger review. Students primarily encounter regrouping during buccaneer problems in the Jolly Roger review when either solving word problems in the buccaneer problems and, or in the Jolly Roger review during the addition and subtraction fluency portion or the word problem portion. So in order to complete addition and subtraction problems with the grouping, students need the following materials. They need their Buccaneer problem worksheet or their Jolly Roger review worksheet, depending on what they're doing. They need their counting up addition and subtraction posters and a pencil. As, the, as students become more fluent and more comfortable with regrouping and solving addition and subtraction problems, teachers can fade out these posters over the course of the intervention. So there are three steps for adding two-digit numbers with regrouping. The first step is to draw the line and circle the sign. We like to say this with kind of a rhyming voice, like draw the line and circle the sign. Drawing the line helps between the ones and the tens column, help, between the ones place and the tens place, helps students to separate the two and not confuse the numbers so that they don't accidentally end up adding a 10 and a one or another 10 and another one. Um, and then circling the sign helps them to slow down and remember whether they're adding or subtracting. Oftentimes students subtract when they should add or add when they sub subtract just because they're moving too quickly. The second step is to count up the ones. And when students need to regroup, they're gonna count up the ones using their counting up strategies. They'll split the sum, write the ones below the equal line and write the tens value above the tens column. And finally, students learn to count up the tens. And I'll demonstrate these how to use these steps in our next example. So this is our first example, 24 plus 38. So the first step that we saw is to circle the sign and draw the line. So I'm gonna go ahead and circle my plus sign. The plus sign tells me that I'm adding. And I'm also gonna go ahead and draw a line between my tens and my ones to help me keep my numbers and their correct place values. So first, students learn to count up the ones. So I'm gonna use my counting up addition strategies to count up eight, four plus eight. If you, I'll demonstrate these, but if you want more in-depth, um, a more in-depth explanation about how to use counting up, you can see our counting up video. So the first step is to put the greater number in my fist and say it. So I'll put eight is greater than four, so I'll put eight in my fist and count up the number that's less, that's four. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. The sum is the last number I say. The last number I said was 12. So now I'm gonna split my sum. So I put my one's value below the equal line. And when I split 12, my one's value is two. So I'll put two below the equal line. And then my tens value is one. So I'll put a one above the tens column. Next, we're gonna count up our tens. Again, I'll use our tens place, and again, I'll use counting up. So first I'll count up three plus two. Three, four, five. My sum is the last number I said. The last number I said was five. Five plus one is six. So my sum for 24 plus 38 is the same as 62. I'm gonna go ahead and erase, erase this problem, and then we'll, I'll model another addition problem. Okay, so our next example is 65 plus 19. So again, my first step is to draw the line and circle my sign. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw the line between my ones column and my tens column to make sure that I'm gonna add my ones together and my tens together. 
And I'm going to go ahead and circle my sign. Here I have a plus sign, which is again telling me that I need to add. So I'm going to look at my ones column first. We have five plus nine. So I'm going to go ahead and count up using my counting up strategies. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 is the last number I say, so my sum is 14. So now I need to split my sum, which is 14, into the tens and the ones. The ones value in 14 is four. So I'm gonna go ahead and write my ones value of four below my equal line. And then the tens value is one. So I'm gonna go ahead and write a one above my tens column. Oop. Now I add up my tens column. I have six plus one plus one. And again, I'll use counting up. Six, seven, six, the sum of six plus one is seven. Seven plus one more is eight. So my sum in my tens column is eight. So the sum of 65 plus 19 is the same as 84. Here we see an example of a student who has added using the regrouping strategies. So you'll notice the student started by start drawing our line to separate the tens and ones and circled the signs. They circled the plus sign telling them to add. Next, the student added eight plus three. Eight plus three is the same as 11. So the student then split the sum. They put the ones value of one in the ones place below the equal line and the tens value of one in the tens column above um, our two vertical numbers. Six plus two is the same as eight. Eight plus one more is the same as nine. So the sum of 68 plus 23 is the same as 91. So now let's talk about subtraction with regrouping. So just like subtraction with, I'm sorry, just like addition with regrouping, subtraction with regrouping has three steps. The first step, similar to addition with regrouping, is to draw the line and circle the sign. The second step is to count up the ones. And to do this with, when we need to regroup in subtraction, we cross 10 out, write one less, and move one before. And don't worry about that too much, I'll demonstrate it in the next um, slide and it'll make more sense. And then finally, the last step is to count up the tens. So here, here we have our first subtraction example and we have 92 minus 75. So just like before, my first step is to draw my line and circle my sign. So I'll draw my line splitting the tens and the ones columns. And I'll circle my subtraction sign. Again, the minus sign tells us to subtract, so we'll be using our counting up subtraction step seen here. So we start by counting up my ones. So my ones say two minus five. Now some kids might try to swap the two numbers by putting, they'll go two, three, four, five. We really have to make sure to emphasize to students that you, in subtraction, you can't switch the numbers. Then students will try to put five in their fist and count up to two, but that doesn't work either. So this tells students that we need to regroup. So in order to regroup, we follow the three steps. We cross 10 out, that's our tens value over here. So I'm gonna cross that nine out. Cross 10 out, write one less, one number less than nine or nine minus one is the same as eight, so I'll write eight and move one before. I move back to the ones place. And since I took a group of 10 here, I'm gonna add 10 to this two and it becomes a 12. I'm gonna go ahead and cross it out and rewrite it just for space, 12. So now I can solve this problem. Now I have 12 minus five and we're trying to figure out what that answer is. So I'm gonna count up. I put five in my fist, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. In a subtraction problem, the difference is the number of fingers I have up. I have seven fingers up, so 12 minus five is the same as seven. So I'm gonna go ahead and write seven in my ones column. Now I need to count up my tens. I crossed out my nine and I have eight, so I have eight minus seven. Again, I'll count up to find the difference. Seven, eight, the difference is the number of fingers I have up, that's one. So eight minus seven is one. That means the difference of 92 minus 75 is the same as 17. So here we see another example. Here I have 43 minus 16. So again, my first step as always is to draw the line and circle the sign. So I'll draw my line between my ones and my tens. 
and then I'll circle my sign. So here I see a minus sign, and the minus sign tells me that I'm subtracting, so I'll follow my counting up subtracting, subtraction steps. So I start by counting up my ones. My ones is three minus six. So as we talked about before, in a subtracting problem, you cannot switch the numbers. So I can't, three minus six, I can't do that. So I need to regroup in order to solve this. So I go cross out 10, cross 10 out, write one less, four, one less than four is three, or four minus one is three. Move one before, three, becomes a 13, whoop, a 13. Because we've regrouped, and so now we get to add 10 to this three and it becomes 13. Now I can subtract 13 minus six, if you can see the 13. 13 minus six, so again I'll count up. So I start by putting the minus number, which is the number next to the minus sign, Six is next to my minus sign, so it's my minus number. I'll put my minus number in my fist and count up to 13. So six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. The difference is the number of fingers I have up. Again, I have seven fingers up, so 13 minus six is the same as seven. Maybe. Now I'm going to count up my tens. I have three minus one. If I don't know that right away, again, I can use my counting up subtraction steps to help me count up. So I put my minus number, the number next to my minus sign in my fist, one, and I'm going to count up to three. One, two, three. The difference is the number of fingers I have up. I have two fingers up, so three minus one is the same as two. That means that our, the difference for 43 minus 16 is the same as 27. Okay, so here we see an example of a student who solved a subtraction problem where they needed to regroup. Notice this, the student draw, drew the line between the ones and the tens and circled their sign. The student saw that it was a minus sign so that they knew that they needed to subtract. They started in their ones place. They saw eight minus nine and realized, oh, I can't, I can't do that, I need to regroup. They crossed 10 out wrote one last and moved one before. Then they did 18 minus nine. They counted up and figured out that 18 minus nine is the same as nine. And then they went to their tens place and saw two minus one. They knew two minus one is the same as one. So they found that the difference, that 38 minus 19 has a difference of 19. So in this video, I demonstrated how to implement regrouping strategies for addition and subtraction in the Pirate Math Equation Quest intervention. I'd like to recognize IES, the University of Texas at Austin, and the Meadows Center for Preventing Educational Risk. Without their support, this research would not have been possible. Thanks for watching.